two in the finish oh, down the stretch. Hammer fist surrender. El Jermaine Sterling. Currently, the UFC's bantamweight division is considered to be the deepest and most competitive division in the world. Oh! At any given night, anyone in the top 15 can defeat another. But for now, the bantamweight king is Aljamain Sterling, who is set to defend his title against former champ TJ Dillashaw. Sterling will look to make history with his win, while Dillashaw aims to regain his glory days. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Bantamweight title fight that will be going down at UFC 280. Aljamain Sterling So let's start off this breakdown with the champ Aljo. With a record of 21-3, Aljo has widely been considered one of the best grapplers and wrestlers in the division for years. Out of his 21 wins, 8 of them have come via submission. He steps over and this is tight, he got it! However, despite being the champ, Aljo has always felt a bit disrespected and underestimated by MMA fans and the UFC brass. He especially felt that going into his rematch against Piotr Jan, who was considered the favorite to win and unify the bantamweight title. A part of this disrespect stems from their original bout which Aljo won via DQ after Jan landed an illegal blow. That Stop! His knee was down. However, lots of fans felt like Aljo was milking the situation despite the clear and obvious foul. But Aljo laid all that talk to rest when he showcased his incredibly dominant wrestling game against Jan the second time and won a split decision after coming back from neck surgery. So there was no doubt about Sterling's heart after that. Currently, Sterling is on a seven-fight win streak, which includes wins over the likes of Jan, Sanhagen, Munoz, and Rivera. As he is set to defend his title against TJ, he'll also have an opportunity to break the tie between him and Marlon Vera for the second most wins in UFC bantamweight history. And by breaking that tie, he will find himself in another one, this time with none other than TJ Dillashaw himself, who is the current record holder for the most wins in the division with 13. TJ Dillashaw So let's move on to the number one contender, TJ Dillashaw. In this case, TJ will be looking to regain his former glory as he infamously tested positive for performance enhancing drugs back in 2019, when he decided to drop down a weight class to take on Henry Cejudo. This decision would be a disaster, as not only did he test positive, but he was KO'd in just 32 seconds by the flyweight champ. TJ would get a two-year ban from the sport, and his previous accomplishments, such as the most wins in the division, most KO wins in the division, and tied for the most consecutive title defenses in the division history, would all be looked through the PED lens. So TJ has an opportunity to rewrite history and change the perspective of people as he attempts to dethrone Aljo. TJ returned to action in July of 2021 where he fought to a razor-thin decision against Corey Sandhagen. But despite winning and earning himself a title shot, TJ had to take a step away from the sport for more than a year as he dealt with a string of injuries stemming from his fight against Sandhagen. However, the former bantamweight champ seems ready to go now, and so are we, so let's break down this fight a little bit further. Striking out of TJ's 17 professional wins, 8 of them come via KO or TKO, so the edge in this department seems to be clear. Right here. That's it. Dillashaw, look at him finish his fight. TJ Dillashaw. However, it's not that clear cut. Aljo does have a unique striking game, which relies heavily on kicks. That's why his striking accuracy is at 50%, which is higher than TJ's. Aljo also tends to land 4.56 strikes per minute while absorbing 2.24 strikes. However, often these strikes are leg kicks or looping punches without a whole lot of power. Meanwhile, when TJ throws, it is to hurt his opponent. TJ lands at a higher rate of 5.26 per minute while absorbing 3.27 strikes. The reason TJ gets hit more is that his game is more striking heavy, so it's natural he'll eat a few more. However, TJ possesses some of the best footwork in the game, along with an incredibly fluid striking package where he throws combos far exceeding the typical 1-2 that you see. Just ask Henan Barrow about that one. TJ also possesses more power in his strikes as he has the record for the most KOs in bantamweight history. 
So if the fight stays standing, we will have to favor TJ in that one. Grappling. Now you would think that this automatically would go to the champ because of his grappling heavy game. However, it's not that simple. What may surprise you is that Aljo's takedown accuracy is a measly 21%. Combine that with TJ's wrestling defense of 86%, and that could be a recipe for disaster for the current champ. However, a big reason for Aljo's current stats is his abysmal performance against Piotr Jan the first time, where he officially went 1 for 7 in takedown attempts. So perhaps numbers don't fully tell the story. But TJ is not a slouch in the grappling department. He came into MMA with a wrestling base and has often used his grappling to keep the fight standing. His wrestling defense can testify for this. Where the real danger lies for TJ is if Aljo can get his back. That is where the champ does his best work. Just ask Sandhagen who Aljo choked out in the very first round. While his fight with Jan was largely determined by Aljo's ability to take his back. So uniquely, the grappling advantage really depends on the specific position. We don't see Aljo having much success if he's simply going for a single leg or double leg takedowns, but if he can create a chaotic situation where he can take the challengers back, then Aljo has a major advantage. For now, we'll favor the champ out of respect in his fight IQ, however, we would not be surprised to see TJ turn this fight into a kickboxing match. Submissions. The submission category is more of a toss-up. Both men have never been submitted in their careers and both tend to have a different fighting approach. Aljo is more methodical with his game where he prefers to establish control over submissions and once that control is set, then he hunts for a variety of submissions. Aljo has a rear naked choke, guillotine choke, arm triangle choke, and even the rare Suloev stretch victories. While TJ prefers damage over submissions, when he has his opponents hurt, he's looking to put their lights out rather than choke them out, which is why you would have to go back all the way to 2012 to find a submission win on his record. And that's exactly what he's trying to do here, and he's tapping him out. But despite that, TJ never really puts himself in a compromising situation. First of all, he rarely gets takedown, and when he does go down, he usually pops back up. So it's hard to say how good his submission defense actually is. But if there is one man who will test that, it will be the champ Aljo. However, because TJ has never been in any submission danger in his career, we would say that this category is more even rather than favoring one fighter over the other. X Factors Now we believe the X Factor for the champ will be his ability to create chaotic situations in the fight. If the fight is too clean and is simply a kickboxing fight or a wrestling match, it's hard to see Aljo winning that. He does his best work when he creates these chaotic situations that allow him to either take his opponents down or get to their back. Aljo tends to set this up with his kicking game, which naturally flows into his grappling, so the champ must be on his A game to do that against someone like TJ. As for Dillashaw, we believe his X Factor will be his age and health. The reality is, when it comes to lightweight divisions, being 36 years old is a major disadvantage. Speed kills in these weight classes, and not only is Dillashaw older, but is coming off a knee surgery, and has not fought in more than a year, and has only fought once in the past three years. So this might be an uphill climb, to say the least, for the former champ. In his last fight, he did show signs of slowing down as Sandhagen was able to figure out his unique stand-up game that relies heavily on speed and reaction time, and he even dropped TJ multiple times in the fight. So if we see that TJ has lost another step when he faces off against the Prime Aljo, then it might be a long night for him. Fight Prediction from the odd standpoint, it's really a pick'em. Currently, Aljo sits at minus 175, while TJ comes in at a plus 145. So even the odds understand that this is an extremely competitive title fight. If Aljo comes out and puts his pace on TJ and really tests his gas tank, we could see the aging star fade later in the rounds where Aljo can then do his best work and take home a decision win, and tie both TJ and Dominic Cruz for the most title defenses in Bantamweight history, and tie TJ for the most wins in the division too. However, if Aljo isn't able to grapple with TJ, we've seen in the past that Aljo is more than hittable and that TJ can crack with the best of them. If that's how the fight plays out, we can easily see TJ redeeming himself as he extends his KO record and reclaims the bantamweight title. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell beside it so that you're notified the next time we upload a new video. And with that being said, you just watched us break down the upcoming UFC 280 co-main event, Sterling vs. Dillashaw. We'll see you next time.